So when it comes down to how much money did we make farming in 2022, it ended up being Release the Kraken! So we run a small duck, goose, cow, and tree farm here in Northern Vermont. And one of the questions I'm most often asked is how much money can we actually make as a small farm? Like what are the honest to goodness numbers? How much can somebody reasonably expect to make? And well, in today's video, I'm gonna break it all down for you. And we're gonna be wildly transparent and you're gonna see just how much money our farm farm operations made in 2022. I know that it's a question that's been on everybody's mind. For folks who are out here watching our videos, you know, they see us on a regular basis with a small flock of ducks, a small flock of geese, a small herd of cattle, handful of trees, and they genuinely say, well, just how much money can you actually make? And it's a surprisingly more complicated question than you might think, because as I break all this down for you guys, you'll actually see that our farm isn't just like one farm, it's like eight farms combined into one. That's right, our farm forms like Voltron. So when you look at our farm, there's several ways that our farm makes money. First off, we have the tree business. So we grow tree seedlings on our farm and then we will sell those young tree seedlings to people and they'll pay us money for those seedlings. And so that's one business. This year, specifically in 2022, we did chestnuts, black locust, and apple tree seedlings. Second, we raised ducks on our farm. Ducks were actually the first thing we started here at our farm back in 2018. The reason we raise ducks is number one, we raise them for eating eggs. Number two, we raise them and sell the fertilized eggs by mail. Number three, we sell ducklings, so just freshly hatched baby birds. We also sell adult birds occasionally. It's not a big part of our business, but it's it does contribute to our bottom line. And then we cull a lot of our male ducks for meat. So typically if we do a big hatch in a year, we're gonna have you know half of our birds be male and half of our birds be female. The females we add to our laying flock, for most of the males, we will end up culling them and putting them in the freezer and we sell them. Again, it's not a big part of our business, but it does contribute. Third, we raise geese on our farm and we've been doing geese now since 2019. Now we very, very rarely will sell eating eggs, but mostly we're selling fertilized goose eggs through the mail. We also sell goslings. We also sell a handful of adult birds every year. And a big business for us is we actually sell geese for meat. So the production cycle, much like the duck production cycle is, we will hatch out a bunch of geese in the spring. We will sell some of them as baby birds. We'll sell some of them as adult birds, but then a lot of them will call at the end of the year, you know, once the grass stops growing, and then we will sell those those birds as meat birds. And I'll talk a bit about what that looks like in a moment. We raise chickens more as a tool to help us balance the ecosystem of our farm. I'm also allergic to duck and goose eggs, so I like to eat their eggs. And as a byproduct of that, we usually have a handful of chicken eggs that we're selling every week, but it's not a big business for us. This year, 2022, was the first year we started selling beef on our farm. So we do have a small fold of Scottish Highland cattle. We started with four cows and a steer back in the fall of 2021. We harvested our first steer, Kurt Cobain, uh, in the fall of 2022. Rest in power, King. We also had four calves born this year. And so as I think about the future of our farm, beef is going to be a growing and important part of that picture. And then we also do certain what I'll call value-added products. So taking some of the byproducts from some of the animals that we raise and doing a little work with them and then selling them as sort of specialty things. So notably, for the last couple of years, we've been selling goose quills. So like, you know, people who do calligraphy often like to use a goose quill and so we'll sell those and we're also about to sell two new products specifically dog treats made from duck and goose feet as well as soap made from beef tallow and I'll talk more about both of those in a little bit as well but when you look at this whole comprehensive picture this is why I say our farm isn't just like one farm there's a lot of little businesses that sit with inside our farm and so let's talk about how each of these pieces performs and what sort of things it can contributes to our bottom line. And first we'll start with the ducks. So when I look at the ducks and, and what we're doing right now, number one, we're selling those eating eggs. Like I said, we're selling them in half dozen for $4 a clip or a whole dozen for $6 a clip. We sold 27 half dozens this year and 41 whole dozens this year. So not a huge generator of revenue. I mean, we're, we're talking about $350 really, but they also don't cost us a ton to produce. And so when I look at it, you know, we're, we're talking about a couple hundred dollars at the end of the year from the duck eggs. But remember, 
These duck eating eggs are a byproduct of our farm business, not a core part of our farm business. The fertilized egg business is actually a big one for us. And so we will sell a dozen fertilized eggs through the mail for $60 a pop. We sold 49 of those and that generated nearly $3,000 in revenue. The costs aren't too bad. We have the cost of feeding the ducks and then we have the cost of shipping the eggs. Those are really the only two costs that contribute to the fertilized egg business. And so ultimately we ended up with more than $2,000 in gross profit from the fertilized eggs. Also, as I said earlier, we hatch out our own ducklings. We were selling those ducklings for about $11 a year. We sold 14 of them in total. Really the cost per unit is insignificant. It's, it's not a big deal. And so we made almost $100 there as well. We'll also occasionally sell to folks some adult ducks. And those are usually the female ducks and we're selling them for about $50 a pop. We sold four of those this year. Not a huge contributor to revenue. You know, I think the other th important thing to do here is you're looking at this spreadsheet and wondering like, well, how do I determine my cost per unit? It's kind of a complex formula I have going on where I'm taking like one duck and saying, how much does it cost to support that duck for a year? What's the opportunity cost of the economic value of the egg? And then I'm applying that formula based on where the duck is in its life stage as well as what it's produced. So for example, I sold a two-year-old female duck earlier this year for $50. If I'm thinking about the cost of her, Really what I'm thinking about is how much did it cost to hatch her? How much did it cost to grow her to that point? I subtract some of the value that she's already produced in terms of the eggs that she's produced in that time period or the ducklings that she's produced in that time period. But ultimately what I'm looking at is essentially an economic value where, you know, the value of that duck to me is about $20 and I'm selling it for $50. So it gives me roughly $30 in profit. And then the final part of our duck business is we do sell ducks for meat. As I said earlier, you know, if you have a duck flock, you know that you can't have too many drakes relative Relative to females, yet if you're hatching out duck eggs, you're gonna get about a 50-50 mix. And so that means at the end of our summer months, we called 24 ducks. And just so I could have a nice clean kind of apples to apples spreadsheet to share with you guys, what I did was I took the total sale revenue of those ducks that I sold. And so I was selling my meat ducks for $9 a pound, and they were checking in at about three pounds per duck. You know, some of them were actually up at four pounds. Some of them were like two and a half pounds. What you see here is I basically took my revenue number, which was generated by selling all 24 ducks and divided by 24. And so that's how you get that average price of about $29.27 per duck. You know, the cost that you see here, that 1821, that actually was a result of you know, looking at all of my costs to raise those drakes and determining them, you'll see it's actually not that far off from like the cost of a female duck, for example. And so the meat duck business, again, not a primary reason that we do ducks was $265. And so that means the grand total of gross profit that the ducks generated for us this year was $2,800 or just a little bit over that. Again, as you look at this table and say, well, why are you raising ducks on your farm? You can see that pretty clearly the main business is selling the fertilized eggs. Everything else is just sort of like a little bit of an add on. And as I'm starting to look at my farm and how it operates, I'm noticing that this is going to be the pattern because when you look at the next business, which is geese, you're going to start to see something very, very similar for geese. You know, we're selling fertilized eggs and we sold 44 packs of fertilized eggs. That's four eggs for $65 shipped cost about $18 to ship a unit. And so the fertilized egg business for geese generated a little over $2,000 as well. We also do goslings occasionally. We sold 11 goslings. We sold them for $26 a pop this year, just because as I look at what does it cost to raise them and then what's a reasonable profit for me, that it's basically what made sense. Then I also sold eight adult geese at $66 a pop. You know, again, the economics of this, I'm not making quite the same margin as I am on other animals, but it just, it seems about what people are willing to pay versus what it makes sense for me to do to raise them. Again, the goslings and the adults are not a core business. It's an offshoot of my primary businesses. And now the difference between geese and ducks is I do raise geese as a primary meat animal. And you can actually 
you see here, we almost generated $3,500 in gross profit from the geese. We sold 40 geese to folks over the course of the fall. The average price of a goose was selling for about $152. We were charging $14 a pound for the geese and the average price came in at about $152 because you know our animals are coming in between probably 14 pounds, I think was like the biggest. And then we had a couple that were like seven or eight pounds. So there's a pretty wide swing for the size of a goose. But on average, we ended up generating about $152 in revenue for the geese. The expense per unit, you know, that is the cost of feed, that is the cost of housing, that is the cost of slaughter. Doing slaughter this year, I actually did it a little differently. Um, I brought in a crew of folks and they ended up charging me uh, about $18 a bird for butchering, but that was completely bagged, that was completely waxed. When I look at how I did it traditionally with charging for the cost of labor and then charging for supplies and like that, it's actually very, very comparable. And so I'm really happy with how I did the goose processing as well as the duck processing this year. And I'm gonna probably do the exact same thing again next year. And all in all, our goose business ended up generating about $5,800, which I'm pretty gosh darn proud of. I feel really good. You know, this was something that started so small and so slowly, but now I feel like I really have a sustainable method for how I raise geese. I'll probably raise a few more next year and continue to do the same thing I do. When it comes to how do I sell my ducks and geese too, I think this is worth talking about. Typically what I do is I will put them up on our website and people will be able to come in and pay a deposit for that bird. They will come to the farm and they get a tour of the farm and then they pick up the bird and then they'll pay the balance of the bird. I can't actually ship geese because of poultry slaughter laws. There's an exemption that if you raise less than a thousand birds and, and butcher it on your farm, you can sell it on your farm here in Vermont. State laws are different from state to state, but that's what it, it works for us here. And so this hybrid sales model where I'm basically taking a reservation online lets me reach a broader group of folks, but then I'm complying with the laws because people are actually purchasing and paying for the bird when they come to the farm. The other thing you're gonna notice is too, the price that I charge per unit for reserving a goose is actually very similar to my cost. So for this year, if you wanted to reserve a goose with us to come pick it up, I was gonna make you pay $65. And when I totaled all my costs and looked at everything, it ended up costing $66.58 to raise that, that baby bird from an egg to a bird that was frozen and ready to be sold. Well, I actually feel really good about that. The reason I charge that much is that way, if somebody flakes out and they don't pick up their bird, I either can resell it or I just keep it myself and I've paid for the cost of raising the bird. And so, you know, while I'm not generating that excess revenue, I'm also not losing money on the deal or barely losing money on the deal. And so that's why when I'm structuring my business the way I am, that's why I charge that deposit. That way I'm not left holding the bag if somebody flakes out. And what also happens is it creates an incentive for people that really wanna come and pick up their birds. The other big business for us, and this has consistently been a big business, for us is trees. You know, traditionally over the last couple of years, I've been raising chestnut seedlings and selling them. This year, I actually also added additional trees, but this year I was charging $7.50 for the chestnuts. I sold 425 of them. Raising trees, and you'll look at the economics and the margin of this, are so different than raising birds. You know, I'm charging $7.50 per tree seedling. It basically cost me about 77 cents per seedling for a chestnut this year to raise. And so I ended up generating more than $2,800 in gross profit when you look at it because there's not a lot of expense there. And so you'll see there, my gross profit number is very similar to my revenue number. But I will say this, this fall when I purchased my chestnut seed for my 2023 trees, what I noticed was there was a sharp increase in price for chestnuts. These nuts, <laughs> got <he. laughs> I need to buy those nuts as a way to create my seedlings. The chestnut trees I have here on my farm still aren't really reliably producing yet. I'm hoping actually production starts to happen next year. But what that means is that the cost of trees next year is definitely gonna go up. I'll probably end up having to charge almost like 850 or so based on the increase. And it was a steep increase in chestnut seeds over the course of 2022. But luckily I also started to diversify this year and I grew several other trees.
tree crop. So specifically, I raise black locust as well as apples. And so those tree seedlings, I'm able to generate for very, very little money. The black locust tree seedlings, I sold for $4.25 and I sold 500 of them to actually two people bought all 500 trees. They were looking to do some things with the property. They wanted black locust specifically. And so it, it worked out really, really well. You know, this year I sold 325 apple tree seedlings and it generated some money as well. Notice how those are big round numbers I'm selling in terms of 425, 500, 325. That's because for the chestnut and apples, I ended up selling no lot smaller than 25 trees. What I'm realizing is by selling in bulk, it's less work for me. It's fewer customers to have to deal with. So, you know, for folks who I know emailed me and said, hey, can you sell me like three tree seedlings? I'm not actually interested in that business because I'm, I'm kind of doing more like tree seedling wholesale than like tree seedling retail and how I'm doing it because it just makes it so much less work. That's why when you see my cost per unit price, whether it's chestnut, black locust, or apples, it's really modest. Sprouting apple trees and then putting them in a seed bed for a year, it's like a couple hours worth of work for an entire year. Same thing with black locusts. Chestnut's a little bit more expensive because I have to buy the seed stock. When it comes to apples, I'm basically taking the pulp that people create when they make apple cider and I'm just spreading that out to create these wild apple tree seedlings. When it comes to black locust, there's a couple of trees around here that I know of as well as trees actually on our own farm that I just have to go out there and pick them and I have the seed stock basically for free. And so I'm basically just charging a little bit of money for each tree seedling for the time that it takes me to do that work. But other than that, you'll see, you know, the tree business, it's all profit. And so as a grand total, I almost generate created $6,500 in gross profit from the tree business and almost had almost $7,000 in, in revenue for the year. And so I'm pretty stoked on that one. Now let's talk about my friend, Kurt Cobain. So as you guys know, earlier this fall, we processed our first steer on the farm. It was the first time that we were actually raising beef for, for money. And we started making sales in October pretty much as soon as I was able to pick up the meat from the meat processor. Now I've received a lot of questions about, well, how much did that yield? What do the economics look like? And so let me delve into this one pretty deep with you guys. So as you can see right here, this spreadsheet is actually a breakdown of all the cuts of meat I got back, as well as the price that I was charging for each of those cuts of meat, and then how much revenue that that cut of meat is expected to generate or technically it generated for us. And now I'll, I'll explain that one in a second. It was a grand total of 438 pounds of usable beef from one steer came back to us. I felt pretty good about that. You can see sort of how those different cuts stack out. So for anybody who's ever trying to plan for a steer, please know that this was a grass fed uh, two and a half year old steer from our farm. Scottish Highland breed, different breeds are gonna give you different outputs, but just for me being transparent, this is what was produced from Kurt Cobain. The prices I charged was a little bit of me looking around competitively in my marketplace to see what others are charging for, for grass-fed beef, 100% grass-fed beef. And so that's what I'm comparable to. I'm, I'm a little bit low in some areas, maybe a little bit high in some areas. People in other markets, like say in Boston or New York City might look at this and say I'm like way undercharging. But I was trying to strike a balance. I think as I get a little bit better at this and get a little bit better grasp of my car, costs and my target margins in future years, I'm gonna do a better job with this one. But this was my best first attempt. And so that's what you're seeing for those prices. I have sold two thirds of the meat of Kurt Cobain and I probably don't intend to sell too much more because I want it for myself. I'm essentially as Morgan Gold, the person I'm purchasing from Goldshaw Farm, a, you know, a fair amount of beef, uh, you know, about a hundred pounds of beef pretty much that I'm just gonna be personally consuming or well, not personally consuming, like my wife will eat some, friends and family will eat some, but I'm not selling it to the public, but I needed to come up with a way to account for it all. And so I'm basically just charging myself back that retail price. I know some folks are gonna quibble with it, but when it came time to settle up the books and say, well, how much revenue did I generate? I just felt like I essentially have sold out of my steer because I definitely had way more demand than I had for product. And so I know I need to raise more steers and I know that raising steers is gonna be a good business for our farm going forward. And so you're gonna see us doing this more and more. Now that $5,100 number that you see on the screen there, that is not meant to be my total final bottom cost 
last line number because I also had some costs. When I bought Kurt, I actually paid $900 for him because he was already uh, about a year and a half old and because he was already kind of a maturing steer. And so that $900 number was there. It also cost me about $575 to feed him hay over the winter months. So pretty much from like mid-November to, I guess it was mid-May, I was feeding my cattle hay. Kurt was a part of that. Uh, because I had five adult animals, I basically allocated my total cost of hay for the winter. You know, I just divided it by five. And so that's how I ended up with this $575 number. And then in terms of processing, it cost me $800 or a little over $800. You know, and specifically, I went to a USDA inspected processor. I got all my cuts of meat packaged back. So the spreadsheet that you see on the left-hand side, each of those meats was packaged in like various sizes and increments. So for example, even though it says 189 pounds of ground beef, it worked out to be like one pound packages of ground beef. And so I ended up having like 180 plus one pound packages of ground beef. That is something you have to pay for. And that's everything from taking Kurt from the farm to bringing him to the processor who's about, I don't know, 30 minutes away, 35 minutes away to, um, you know, basically walking out of there with boxes of meat, it cost me $802. And so the cost of raising that steer worked out to be a little bit over $2,200. So that $5,100 minus the $2,200 ends up leaving me with a bottom line of about $3,000 for gross profit that was generated by raising my steer. Now, the other important thing to really consider here though is, you know, there are some other infrastructure costs, whether it's cost of fencing or um, water troughs or the materials to build the happy cow mobile that I haven't perfectly allocated in here. And if I was gonna give you a rough ballpark number, I'd say it probably cost me about a thousand bucks. But the problem is, and this is why I'm holding off an allocating those numbers for 2022 is because I, I have things like, well, how does that get offset by a calf that's raised on the farm? Or what's the economic value of a calf? I still haven't quite worked that one through. I'm actually talking to other farmers and I'm talking to an accountant to try to figure out the best way to solve for that one. So this is a $3,000 number, but no, that is probably, I was gonna guess, I would say it's maybe really $2,000 in true gross profit, but keep that in mind. Now there's a couple of other little things that we do on the farm, like I said, chicken eggs, are a byproduct. We've sold 34 dozen packs of chicken eggs at $5 a pop. That ended up leaving me with a gross profit of $132. We also sold 38 packages of goose quill feathers. There was like, I think five feathers per pack. I was selling them at $15 a pack and they sold out so quick. They were sold within 48 hours. It was insane. Really, my only cost with that one is uh, the, the cost of shipping and packaging because the feathers, I just see them as a, almost a waste product from what I'm doing with all the other things with the goose business. And so I didn't try to allocate the feed cost to that. And so that generated nearly $300 in profit. You know, part of farming I'm finding is just kind of figuring out where you can pick up a nickel here and a dime there. There's also two other businesses that I'm in the works on doing. And number one, there's the soap business. And I've got some exciting news on that one. As you guys know, I've been working to make farm soap from the beef tallow that came from our farm. So the steer Kurt Cobain that we processed. I actually ended up taking all of his fat, rendering it down and turning it into soap. And we have, I think it's about 255 bars of soap and they're going on sale next week. Each of the scents of soap is named after a different animal on our farm. I'm really excited about it. I'm not in a position to where I can actually tell you how much I'm gonna generate from them. I have some estimates, but I didn't feel right including those numbers in here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the number that gets generated from the soap business and kick it forward to next year. And so for each year, it's gonna be on a cycle where like the, the gains from the soap business are realized in the following year. I also have plans to make these dog treats. I just haven't had the time to actually make them. And so my plan is once I'm done with the soap sale, I'll turn my attention to the dog treat sale. I mean, look, at this point I have duck and goose feet sitting in the freezer. They're not going anywhere. So I'm not in like a rush to do it, but I want to like get through the soap stuff and not overwhelm myself. But once I'm done with the soap stuff, I will dehydrate the dog treats. And then similarly, I'll kick that forward to next year and, and just kind of always be a year behind. But the other stuff for this year gave me $420. 
If I had to like give you a ballpark guess, I'm gonna say next year the other stuff's gonna probably contribute about, I don't know, $3,500 in gross profit. That's a rough, rough estimate. Um, but it's it's not a huge one, but it's, it's a little tiny noticeable one. So when it comes down to how much money did we make farming in 2022, it ended up being $18,560.86. I know you guys, I am super shocked. I am super happy about it, but I am super shocked. I mean, it's a significant increase from where we were last year. I know it's not an overwhelming number, but I really worked hard to get to that number and I'm pretty darn proud of it. If you compare our year of what we made this year to what we made last year, you can see we more than doubled the number and I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty happy. So when I look at the US poverty line for 2021, for a two person household, which is what my household is, it was $17,420. And so we made $18,560. So we're just above the poverty line. And I know folks are gonna be saying, wow, that's super unimpressive. And how could you be thinking that this is a good thing? But when I compare where we are year over year over year, I'm feeling really good. You know, every single year of our farm that we've been operating as a farm, it has been profitable. It was barely noticeable in 2018 and 2019. It became a nice bump in 2020. 2021 we continued to make improvements and now in our first full year of farming i'm feeling really happy about it also no in, in the name of disclosures that my lawyer wanted me to make in this video number one this is not the bottom line for our llc nor is this considered financial reporting for investment purposes and also these numbers do not consider the impact of taxes depreciation and other accounting measures so please know that these are gross profit numbers for what our farm is doing. I know a lot of people watch our videos and think about starting a farm of their own and wonder how much can they realistically generate. And I feel accountable to you guys to actually share what that number is each year. And so that's what you're seeing here. Now the other elephant in the room that I know I'm gonna get in the comments and, and so I do wanna address it is, there is another element to our farm business that I didn't really go into. And that is this, like the fact that I make videos talking about our farm. You know, I got started making these videos about our farm because I wanted to try to have a way to market our farm products once we had stuff that we wanted to sell. For some misguided reason, I thought people were gonna buy duck eggs because they watched a YouTube video. And even though it didn't quite play out the way I thought it would, it actually was a decent thought because if I look at where the vast, vast, vast majority of our sales come from, it usually comes from folks who are viewing our videos. But the thing I didn't really think about at the time but has played into our farm big time at this point is the thing fact that I also generate money from videos like this one. You know, whether it's on YouTube or Meta or TikTok, you know, th th those platforms are paying me money for the ads that are run against our videos. So you can watch the ads and support our farm. But then we also do things like sell merchandise like t-shirts or a plushy Toby dog or the 2023 Goldshaw Farm calendar. We have a few copies still available and those provide money too. In fact, more of my annual income comes from that stuff than it actually does from farming. And so I do feel like it's very important to be clear I'm not just living off $18,000 a year. And while the traditional farming businesses really only provide us with that $18,000, on a whole, the farm generates a lot more. I hope you guys have enjoyed this comprehensive review of our farm's business. I know it's always tough to watch a guy going through spreadsheets, but I hope there are a few folks out there who actually found this interesting. Have a great day, and I'll be back soon with another video. Say bye to everybody, Ginny. Say bye.